Hey, I was looking around the closet this morning and this is all I could find to wear. <laughs> and if you believe that, oh, Shirley has a big stick to fight off all you ladies after church. So, <laughs> so much for that. Isn't that a beautiful morning out there today? Amen. Not much wind, it's coming later. Going to be a pretty day today. i uh, like to thank Central College Choir from, for coming out to share with us today. Um, I think this is their only public concert that they've gone out to do this year, thanks to COVID. So thanks to COVID, we get to have them here today. Don't forget, after church, there will be dinner served. Uh, be sure to spread out, chat with them, find out where they're from, what they're, where they're at in school, their degree, if they have them, and, uh, and what they're working on. So we'll have a good time. First church dinner in over a year. So stay and share. There's plenty. Other things going on Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock, Bible study and prayer meeting. I invite everybody to come and, and uh, fellowship together on that. That's all we have for this week for announcements. Uh, birthdays this week, Christine Sandow has one coming. Uh, you got her number, Don? Oh, good deal. Good deal. And Tom and Sandy Mock have a, uh, an anniversary on the 17th. Also, there's a new uh, newsletter out on the table. If you didn't get one, come in. Be sure to get one as you leave. If there's nothing else, let's turn in the bulletin as we move to time of worship and uh, read the call to worship together. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his name. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he ruled our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Oh, yeah. Look at this. What a crowd. What a crowd, huh? You look good out there. In typical Lee James fashion, he never told me, so I look woefully underdressed now. <laughs> Not even a tie. But anyway, it's great you're here. I tell you what, we've got a great, uh, we got a great um, uh, thing we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and sing. First of all, we're going to go ahead and sing uh, 338, uh, three, eight, and if you will stand with me and sing that one. We'll start with that one, at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me.
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful morning that we can come together to fellowship. We thank you for this place that we can come. We thank you for the guests that have come to share with us today. Bless each and every one of us and the message they bring and, and just give us the courage to carry it with us as we go about. We just pray all this in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let's sing two more songs, and we're going to sing them back to back. 257 will be the first one, and 297, and I think Marie's going to play this one all the way through once. So, she'll get here.
good one. Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad to see each and every one of you, but there are some people here today that we haven't seen in church for over a year, <laughs> and some other people we haven't seen a whole lot lately, and they're here too, and so it's really good to, to be back like this. Uh, if you're wearing a face mask, that's great, that's fine. <laughs> if you're not, that's okay too. I feel like we're almost uh, through this time. And we're just thanking the Lord that he's brought us this far. It's uh, time for us to go to the Lord in prayer. And we've got a lot to pray about, a lot of rejoicings, and uh, also some concerns. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do come before you, praising you and thanking you for your mercy and your grace to us. These two songs that we have just sung are about the story that we have heard and we have received through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and it has brought eternal life to us. And Lord, the challenge that the Psalms put forth is the challenge we face, and that is how do we take this message out to others who need to hear it? Thank you, Lord, that it is not just up to us, but that you are working in and through us. And Lord, we just offer ourselves to you as willing instruments in your hand, we thank you for Central Christian College and for all the ministry that has taken place there over the years. So many lives touched. So many people encouraged to go forward out into the world 
to proclaim your glory, to live lives as your people among others, whether they're in business or education or whatever area they go into, including ministry, Lord. You bless them and you use them, and we thank you for that. Thank you for the choir that is here today and for the year that they've had, even though it's been tumultuous and up and down with so many things going on in this past year as we look back at the the canceled plans and things like that. We just uh, thank you that you brought them through, and we pray that you would bless them today as they minister to us and tell us the story in various ways and words. We look forward to that. Lord, we also want to lift up our nation to you. We ask for your touch, your healing touch on our land, and your blessing, and your mercy, and your grace. Be with our leaders. You turn their hearts like you can turn water in your hand. We pray that you would direct them in the course they should go. We thank you for it. Lord, we also thank you for the good news this week from Clarice and her exams, and that uh, she is doing well. Continue to bless her. We pray for Amy Baumgartel, who was injured quite a bit with a dirt bike accident and the surgery this week, and she's going through a lot of pain now. We just pray for your healing touch on her and uh, steadiness in her spirit. Help us, Lord, as we look forward to vacation Bible school and ministry this way. Be with uh, the volunteers that are stepping forward and also the children that will be coming and a part of this. May we Plant seeds of your word in their lives, and may you bring the fruit for that. We pray for Dean, Paula Larson's brother, and his chemotherapy treatment. Encourage him. And George Stout, continue to heal him after his surgery. And Dan, the brother, friend of, brother of a friend of Bill Chase and the cancer that he's going through. And William Jones, Lord, thank you for the good things that are happening with him, even though he's been through so much. Keep strengthening him and Karen. And Steve Woodruff, we pray for comfort and wisdom and guidance about the future and and with Marie, too, as she is an encouragement to him and a a helpmate in many ways. And Rose Sheehan and, and just her situation, Lord. Give her comfort and peace. And Michelle, pray for strength for her. And April, this friend of Donna Edgar and her treatment. And Lord, we pray for Linda Kaiser's family over in Missouri. So many of them have been diagnosed with COVID-19. We just pray that uh, their cases would be mild and that they have not spread it too far and wide. And uh, just continue to give Linda direction and comfort too, in every way. And Lord, there are unspoken requests among us. We lift them before you now. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We pray your blessing on the rest of this service, and may we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I usually get to sit down now, but I don't. <laughs> We're going to worship the Lord in giving, and the uh, passage that I would like to call to your attention is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And... Uh, we are not collecting, passing the offering place because of COVID, but there's a box in the back. If anyone, if you saw it coming in or if you didn't, going out is fine too. This is Jesus talking about where our treasure is and what is really important in this life. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Would you come forward, please, Clayton? Thank uh-huh. you. 
so blessed. So uh, without further ado, introduce you please yourself. That was a, an African psalm set to a, a Kenyan folk tune, but then um, it was set with psalms, of course, um, uh, reset with psalms to make it um, worshipful, more worshipful in um, a Christian setting. Um, next we have up um, Cantate Domino, which is uh, Sing to the Lord, a new song in, uh, in Latin, and uh, so I hope you enjoy that. After that, we will have a Down by the Riverside and then a few hymns for you.
The kingdom of righteousness. I see a king will reign in righteousness. A ruler will rule in, with justice. Each one will be like a shelter w from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert, in the shadow of a great rock in the thirsty land. Then the eyes of those who will see no longer be closed. The ears of those who we hear will listen. The fearful heart will know and understand, and the stammering tongue will be fluent and clear.
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, this is my song. praising my Savior. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth is give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Through its waters roar and foam, and mountains quake in their surge, surging. There is the river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord's Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the Lord has done, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
<clears throat> that last piece was that God is our refuge and strength, one that um, i chosen for the choir as we were approaching um, this fall uh, semester. I felt like it was appropriate with everything that we've gone through with COVID and, um, and something that we could uh, grasp a hold of to his psalms. Um, the next few pieces are going to be um, uh, kind of um, more based around folk tunes. The first one is Lord of the Dance. Uh, you may recognize it's the same tune as A Gift to be Simple. Um, and then following that, we will have um, er Emerald Stream, which is a, an acapella piece, but it's um, written and sung in the style of the sacred harp, um, the shape note singing so of the Appalachian. So I hope you enjoy that. Meditate on the words he has made, great God, our sovereign Lord. 
Join us now, the meadow is green and the water is pure and the woods serene and the blowing air is fresh and clean where God is blessing for. Will the wind come down here? It whistles as it goes, it whistles as it goes, as it goes, as it goes, a blessing from above. And the sun comes up and the sun goes down and the sun comes up and the sun goes down. In this great garden, the Lord will visit once again to see what we have done. As God is a shepherd and we are the sheep, we our mother earth must keep, maintain the air, protect the deep, at judgment day he'll come. See the Lord come down see here with the as he goes, see the Lord come down as he goes, as he goes, as he goes. Remember all this power. See the Lord come down, see the shining bright, and his glory comes on the shining bright, and the shining bright, and the shining bright, you will regret that hour. So now, my people, beware, you're in charge of the seas and the earth and the air, you better take extraordinary care of the earth, our only home. All glory be to God on high, shout praises loudly to the sky, listen to the earth and hear her cry, and in heaven forever roam.
featured um, that featured uh, Laura Lee on violin and, and uh, Emily Epp on keyboard. And I wanted to say earlier um, we had uh, Luke Corporates that had the solo in Blessed Assurance. Um, and that was uh, Christ Be With Me. So the, the words of that are attributed to St. Patrick way back from the 5th century. And so um, it, it's, a, it's wonderful to bring that text back up, uh, people praising uh, St. Patrick and then others praising the Lord back then. And, uh, and we can use it now and set it to music. Um, up next is our final piece that we have for you today. It's Walk in, Jerus Walk in Jerusalem. It's a spiritual um, that is arranged by um, Rollo Dilworth, and I hope you enjoy this one. I should say thank you again for letting us come and worship with you today. Wow, that was a blessing, wasn't it? I've got a little short, short, short meditation. I hate to spoil uh, what has been done so far. We're uh, very appreciative of your music and of your ministry, really. Uh, you know, you're good singers. That's good. <laughs> but it's not just that. It's that you're singing it, you know, from the heart, and you're singing God's truth, and you really are a blessing. Well, for my part today, I would like us to spend just a few minutes looking at uh, Psalms, chapter 4. It's uh, page number 533 in your pew Bible, or just about the middle. 
maybe slightly left of the middle. <laughs> Psalm chapter 4. I was praying. I didn't, uh, didn't spend a whole lot of time preparing this message this week because I knew it was just going to be really short. And I just kept praying all week, Lord, thank you for giving me something to share Sunday that's appropriate. And it wasn't until this morning I woke up thinking, Psalm chapter 4. So here we are. Would you stand as we read together? Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking who will bring us prosperity. Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And you may be seated. Uh, I love Psalms and Proverbs. It's part of what we call wisdom literature. It's uh, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. They're kind of right in the middle there. They're not history, and they're not theology. They're just they're, they're poetry, and they're books of wisdom that explain to us sometimes the why. Why does God do the things that he does, and why are we here, and what is our purpose in what is going on here? And they're also loaded with lots of principles for practical living. I think a good reading plan for you, anybody that's wondering about a good reading plan, is to read five chapters of Psalms and one chapter of Proverbs each day. If you do that, you'll get through all of it in about a month, 30 days, because there's 150 chapters in Psalms and 31 in Proverbs, and you just kind of do a little extra work one day. Um, And if you're interested, there are some sheets on the back table that have it broken down, because some of the chapters in Psalms are really short, and you can get through several of them, more than just five. And of course, when you come to 119, you don't want to do that in and four more because you'll be at it all day. <laughs> it's a really rich chapter too. But, uh, so if you want to pick those up on your way out, that would be great. But I recommend reading it again and again and again. Various times in your life, various parts of it will pop out at you and give you new un- understanding and insight and encouragement. And also read it in different translations. This is NIV. Um, it's a good translation. But I think it misses a little bit in just this chapter that we read now. So reading different translations gives you a fuller picture of what the original had to say. And I want to name drop. Billy Graham used to do this. Words of wisdom. Five psalms and one proverbs a day. I don't know if he did it every day of his life, but I know that for a while there, he was doing it regularly. Wisdom is a good thing. King Solomon went and offered a thousand cattle in worship to God, and he was really doing it from his heart. And God came to him that night afterward in a dream and said, Solomon, I'm pleased with you. Request of me whatever you want, and I'll do it for you. And Solomon said, well, I've become king after my father David, and I'm just a child. He wasn't really a child, but that's his humble way of speaking to God. I'm just a child, and I need your wisdom. Please give me wisdom. And God said, It is good that you've asked for wisdom. You could have asked for long life or wealth or honor or the death of all of your enemies. But instead, you ask me for wisdom. I will give you wisdom and honor and riches. And if you keep walking with me, long life. Wisdom is good. Wisdom is worth seeking. And then stick with what you learn in wisdom. Don't be like Solomon, who did actually stray quite a bit toward the end. Okay, Psalm chapter 4 in a nutshell. Verse 1, and this ENIV doesn't get real clearly the breakdown, but in verse 1, the psalmist is petitioning God. He says, hear me, 
You have heard me in the past. Continue to hear me. He's declaring his confidence that God is there for him. And then verses 2 and 3, he switches and he's speaking to others. And he says to them, you don't understand me. You aren't seeing me as God sees me. Your values are wrong. You're wrong in your aim and in your purpose. And my defense is that I am seeking the Lord. I am a godly person. Not to say that in a vain or pompous way, but someone who is seeking after God. And God hears me. Then verses 4 through 6, the first part of 6, he gives instructions for relationship with God. He says, tremble before God. And this is, you've heard, the fear of God, you know, filled with the fear of God. It does not mean where you run and hide in a corner and and think that you're, you're, you know, God is just going to destroy you. He might, you know, if you are under his judgment. But if you come to him... In his grace and mercy, he forgives you. But the fear of the God, the the trembling, is respect for his awesomeness. He's always there, but he's not like some dog that just comes running up and licks our hands whenever we, you know, pay any attention to him. That's not God. He is the awesome creator of the universe. Tremble before him. And then it says, make a sacrifice of righteousness. And that's not talking about money or things that we do for show to get people to look at us and say, oh, what a, what a wonderful Christian you are or what a, what a great person you are. It's not about that at all. It's what we do in sincerity of heart to God and for God. It involves um, the two great commands that Jesus gave us. You know those. First one, love the Lord your God with everything you've got, and then love the the people around you, as much as you love yourself. And then we can trust in the Lord and not be afraid of our outward circumstances. And then the last chunk, verses six, the second part of verse 6 through 8, he's back to speaking directly to God. He says, Lord, lift up the light of your face upon us, or the countenance in another translation. It's God making eye contact with you. You know, it says in the Bible, the eye is the window of the soul. And what we want and what we need from other people is a sense of significance. When they look at us, when you look at others and make eye contact with them and you really listen to them, it shows that you value them. And when God looks at us and lifts up his face upon us, his countenance, it shows that he really values us and we look back to him. There's a story of a little girl who came home from school one day, and she was really excited. She said, Mommy, Mommy, you should hear what we did in school today. And then she started going on and on about the things that she had done. And her mom was busy doing some work that she had at home there from her job. And she said, yeah, that's nice, honey, that's nice. And she just didn't even look at her, just kind of ignored her. Later on, she was getting supper ready, and her daughter was starting up again. And, and she said, oh, that's nice, honey. She kept on with her cooking. And finally, after supper, the daughter thought, I'm going to get her to listen to me now. And she's talking to her. And her mom said, oh, time to get ready for bed. Go go take your bath now. Finally, she was tucking the little girl into bed. And the little girl said, Mommy, do you love me? Because she couldn't understand the love because the mom was not lifting up her countenance or lifting up her face upon her and not looking at her. So the word for us there is God is doing that to us because he loves us. And we look back at him and also at others when we, when we pay attention to them. Relationship to God is the greatest blessing in life. Yeah, friends are good. And the other blessings that we've received are good. But, you know, God is the creator of it all. Don't focus on the stuff that he's made, but focus on him. We get caught up in life and things around us. Pleasures and pastimes, time wasters pains that we've got, compulsions that drive us sometimes, or fears that we have. They all seem so important. But the source of everything, life itself, is God. And that's where we need to be looking. He looks on us, and we turn our eyes toward him. There's an old song, you young folks, maybe some of you have heard it. I had to sing it when I was in college voice class. I'm going to spare you that this morning. I'm going to read it. (laughs) O soul, are you weary and troubled? 
No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, thank you that you lift up your countenance upon us, that you give us peace, that you pour out your grace on us. You're not like a dog. We are like dogs to you. You are the awesome creator of everything. We turn our eyes toward you, and we rejoice in you that you are looking at us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had together here today. Thank you that you have been here with us, a part of it. I ask, Lord, that you'd continue to bless our fellowship even after this service as we, as we talk together and as we fellowship together over lunch. Thank you for that and for those who have prepared it. Please bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. And we have a special benediction today.